Can I get my hard drink? Sorry, I got interrupted. I heard he's got the strength of the righteous, doesn't he? Boyfriend fine religions. Sounds like you've got big plans for yourself. Yeah, let's go with that. Her pretty eyes soften. Yeah, I do. Can't stay here forever. You got a look that says you're not just here for entertainment. Are you a badge? Do I look like a cop? She flutters her eyelashes. <laughs> no, you look like someone who knows the shadows. We're trained to stop uh, to spot a bronze the minute they walk in. Something I can help you with? I got a few questions. Um, got that guy mentioned Coyote. She looks worried. No, I think she's away on business. She a shaman with a name like Coyote. N she laughed. No, she shot a Coyote once, thinking it was a shaman who double crossed her. Uh, we've been calling her Coyote ever since. Her face falls. She's been missing a couple for a couple of days now. Some of the people think the Ripper got her, but I know her. Cody can take her can can take care of herself. Um, let's talk about Sam Watts. Another name? She nods. Sam was a regular customer here and a regular pain in the ass for as long as I've been here. Talked a big game, but he was always broke. As soon as he got money in his pocket, he went straight to his head. Chips, drugs, or booze. Coyote had a soft spot for him, though. Uh, did you see him on the night he died? No, that was Coyote shift. I assume because that was the person who gave her the drink, as the receipt said, so. Um, tell me about this place. So, some come here for booze, uh, some for companionship. Others are looking for something they can get, uh, they can't get anywhere else. If it's illegal or immoral and it can't be, and it can be bought, sold, rented, or consumed, you can probably find it here. The union seems to attract people like you. So who was that you were talking to? I assume an old boyfriend. Yeah, Shane, old boyfriend. He used to work here. Then one day he saw a billboard for the Universal Brotherhood, and that, and then that, that was that. Went uh, to a meeting and made new friends. Moved in with them. I was happy for him until he started coming around to recruit me. I don't need that dreck. Uh, who runs the place? I assume Miss Kabuda. Yeah, she's in the back room. You can't miss her. <laughs> Whiz. Nil sweet. Talk to you later. I think there's a glossary. Hold on. Can I get a glossary here? Uh, sin is a uh, system identification number. I wanted to see what Wiz and Null Sweet meant. Because I've noticed that a few times and I don't. Frag is like frag off. It's a coarse word. Same with Drek. Those two I can understand. I don't know what whiz or null sweet means. I assume that means like thanks and and stuff like that. So Eric Mersman, what's your story? That's not how Coyote does it. Hey lady, I got some extra outfits. I'm ready. I'm trying to unload. You want dibs? Uh, it's just a clothing store. Okay. So we have Jin Parks and we have Mr. Clue. Let's go with Jin. The Asian woman's expression reads, open for business, but her demeanor reads, dealer, rather than companion. She has a jack on her neck, a gun on her hip, and a chip on her shoulder. She eyes you with a sneer. You look like you could use some firepower. Something simple. I got guns so smart they practically fire themselves. You looking for tech? Got some of that too, if it's not, uh, if that's the way you roll. What kind of weapons we got? Just regular weapons. Some drones, some grenades, some medics. Okay, <laughs> some medics. Med kits. There you go. Alright, Mr. Clue, can I get back here or not? Posted to the doorway to the VIP section is a tower of troll muscle wrapped in an impossibly tailored suit. Whether the product of good genes or expensive aftermarket cosmetic works, the troll's glimmering horns perfectly frame his face, and his polished tusks and goatee uh, assinuate? I think it's assinuate. I can't, I can't pronounce it today. Assinuate the set of, lantern, of a lantern jaw. Welcome. Please behave yourself. Do you get trouble here often? Nothing a stern look can't usually solve. You have business here? 
Um, and my friend is Sam Watts. You know him? Sure, everyone here knew Sam. Shame to lose part of the family. There's a sharpness in his eyes, the look of a man who has seen much and earned wisdoms at a young age. I figure Sam was the type who need to be thrown out on occasions. In your role here, I, I suppose you often escorted Sam to the door. Yes, albeit gently. Sam was a drunk, but he usually wasn't a violent one. Usually. What about the night he died? He was a bit agitated. Didn't catch the specifics. Might have been over a woman. Though, I thought I was going to have to show him out, but I had to deal with a couple of rival go-gangers posturing for one of the working girls upstairs. Jake helped Sam out that, uh, help out. Jake helped Sam out instead. Have we met Jake yet? Alright. I appreciate you talking to me, dude. Happy to help. Uh, there's Nog. There's Kabuto. Have we met a Jake? Oh, yes. Jake. The, he left already. Uh, Johnny Clean. Oh, this is the... Yeah. A man dressed like a janitor, but is wearing unusually clean overalls. He's tall, ra uh, rail thin, and has a cunning look in his eyes that says he's more than just a maintenance man. Howdy. My name's Johnny Clean. You knew? Um, I imagine you've seen all sorts of things in a place like this. Huh? True. Quite true. And I keep my mouth shut about it, too. That's the secret to keeping a job here, and staying alive in general. Gotta work around. I uh, gotta work. See you around. All right. Thanks for the talk, dude. Noog. Noog, covered in a glowing magical talismans and fetishes, the troll doesn't seem fully to this world. He mumbles to himself constantly, apparently uh, per participating in several conversations at once. But with entities you can neither see nor hear. I told you, it's not like that at all. Bring me proof and you shall have it. I'm honored, your majesty. That was what, uh, that, that was why I said to use mustard instead of catsup. Nice. Forgive me, Jean. I was a fool. He looks you in the eye. His other conversations on hold. You may pursue my magical wares and, oh, I don't need fetishes. Sorry. Miss Kabudu. Kabuda? Uh, she watches you across the room, sizing you up as you approach. As you get closer, you can see that she's a mixed race, African and Japanese. Her demeanor says, this is my house, Met mess with it at your peril. But her eyes twinkle with playful light when she speaks. Uh, Kanba... Fuck, I can't... I can't do Japanese. Good evening. There you go. Uh, my, by, but, uh, but aren't you a pretty elf? Are you enjoying yourself in the seamstress union? There should be plenty for a woman like you to enjoy. She eyes you closely. Or is this business? I'm tempted to ask what's upstairs. Um, pretty sure it's a brothel. Yeah, let's go with, uh, I, n I just need a moment of your time, miss. I have some topics to discuss. Zoka. So, uh, Suka, uh, and why should I help you, Sam Watts? Her face brightens, amused. Ah, so you are the little insurance policy he would go on about when he was drunk. His avenging angel who would strike back for him from beyond the grave. What do you want to know? Um, why? Okay, let's start off with this place. Why did you call it the Seamstress Union? During the gold rush years, there was a census. And the politicians wanted as high a number as possible to gain the power and revenue. To bolster the numbers, they decided to include all the working girls, of which there were many into the roles. However, given the times, they could not list the girls' true occupations, so they entered them all as seamstresses. When a girl accumulated enough money to open her own place of business, she named it as uh, she named it the Seamstress Union, so potential workers would know that they would be treated fairly there. Thus, a rich tradition was born. So you're a former, uh, seamstress. 
No, perhaps we know each other more. I, I will reveal more about myself. For now, enjoy the union. All right, well, how well did you know Sam? I knew him. We all did. We already figured that out because the bouncer already told us that. Uh, Sam was regular here whenever he could beg or borrow enough new yen to become altered in some way. Drugs, ship, alcohol. It didn't matter to Sam. As long as he had been, uh, he was always looking for the next fix. He clung to this place like it was his lifeline, and we treated him as a part of the family, even if none of us truly liked him, except Coyote. He's missing. The night of his death, did you see him? He was here, quite inebriated, as often as, uh, as he is often, as he often was, there you go. Coyote was working a bar that night, and she informed me that Sam was getting rowdy and belligerent with other customers. When I requested he leave, he refused. My bouncer, Mr. Clue, was off dealing with another issue, so I requested that Jake escort out the back, uh, escort Sam out the back door to the alley. That was the last I saw either of them. And where's Coyote? Her face darkens. Would that I could. I've not seen her in two days. She's a smart woman and quite dangerous, but I fear for her. Uh, if she's smart, why fear for her? Because she is in a dangerous line of work and there is always so much smarter, more prepared. Her room is upstairs. If you're looking for her, I invite you to examine it. You may be able to uncover her, her whereabouts. I would not normally betray her privacy in this way, but she's missed two shifts now and cannot be reached on her calm. It is unlike her. If something has happened, I will not have in a, I will not have inaction on my conscience. Here's the key. I love how she like automatically just gives us the key, and she's like, "All right, go do it." All right. Uh, is this her room? Is this just a room? Yeah, it looks like it's just a room we can open. This is a brothel. Maybe you come in here with a partner. Alright, let's start examining shit. Looks like Coyote keeps her clothes in a box on the floor. The stand is littered with action movies and cigarette butts. The framed painting of Chicago skyline done in a stylized silhouette. Alright, what's on the bed? Coyote's bed has a diary with several papers sticking out. Uh, first paper. There's a rec receipt stuck between the pages and a diary entry. Let's write the receipt for a second. A receipt from Browning Max Power Pistol from Jim Park downstairs with a note saying... How big guns on hot women turn her on. Good. Good. That's what I needed to know. Alright, the diary entry. What we got? I came back from my shift at, uh, to find four Paco's goons sleeping on the apartment floor. It's getting fragging ridiculous. I wouldn't to be with him, with the real Paco. Paco? Paco? I'm gonna call him Paco because it sounds natural to me for some reason. But this cutter dreck keeps uh, messing everything up. I love him, but he's totally different with that gang. It's like, how could I make pa cash, he always says. Or it's how I make cash, he always says. But I, I try and tell him he doesn't need to make cash. I can support us with the both, uh, us both with what I make at the seamstress. But he still goes on these runs with these bozos all over my floor. I feel like he's just seeing how far he can push me before I kick him out. I try to be patient, but why does he have to be all one way? As soon as the last cutter on well, was out on the door, I lost it. As soon as the last cutter was out of the door, I lost it. I told him if he ever pulled direct like that again, that he'd be sleeping in the alley. Of course, he begged and pleaded with me, telling me it wouldn't happen again. I don't want to deal with this anymore, and I, but I don't want to leave him. He's the reason I got through all that stuff last year. I got my bartending license, got this apartment, and this life. I know he cares about me and he loves me, but more than this, uh, than his involvement with the Cutters, I just wish I could slice out that gang from our life together. Slice out the fear that comes with it. 
second paper. A uh, handwritten poem. I'm not... Should I read the poem? Let's just say that Paco should stick to guns and motorcycles and leave poetry to others. Good. I was like, I don't want to recite some gangster's poetry. Not to say that gangsters can't do, you know, make decent poetry, but he's running out with people and he's begging his girlfriend to, like, I don't know. Maybe I, maybe I shouldn't just jump to conclusions. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I should be like, oh, fuck yeah, poem. Plus, I just don't like poems in general.